So the topic of today is moral of the story, men with toxic, quote, unquote, masculinity, right? So when we're talking about masculinity, a lot of people have this misconception of what it actually is. People think because they rah ride the chest that that's masculine. People think because when they get disrespected, that they can pop off and they can whoop somebody ass, that's masculinity. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get into the scriptures, we're going to get some definitions, and we're going to really dive into what is masculine amongst our people, teachers, husbands, brothers. Is that actually masculine or is that a different type of spirit that we're dealing with? Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. I wanted, The first scripture I'm going to bring out is uh, Colossians chapter 4. So the first aspect that we're dealing with is how do we deal with other people, whether it's people in the world, whether it's people that are scoffers, whether it's people that want to debate. How do we deal with these individual people, right? Dealing with people and teaching people. So first scripture I want, Miles, can you get me? Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Con, Colossians 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Hold that right there. It says, walk in wisdom toward those that are without. This is very, very, very important because it coincides with verse 6. Read. Let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man right so now we see how these two work in conjunction it's literally telling you there is a way that you deal with people whether they have questions or even if, if, if it's in a debate or a disagreement it says always let your speech be seasoned with grace if you're dealing with ignorant individuals walk in wisdom toward those people that don't have wisdom we got a lot of brothers, whether it's street teaching, whether it's clubhouse, whether it's debates online, when they start feeling offended or when they feel that people aren't getting it or when, they, when someone is contentious, that we meet stupidity with stupidity. We meet pettiness with pettiness. We're being tit for tat. That's not wise. That's not masculine. A lot of brothers think it's masculine to... I'm not going to let this nigga talk to me like that. I, I, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. I ain't no bitch. You a bitch. That's not masculine. Because what you've allowed to happen is an individual to dictate your response. You've allowed an individual to dictate uh, 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 how you're feeling. Dictate your spirit in that time, right? Now watch this. Give me... Um, actually, we're going to have to jump down to it right now. Give me a uh, Proverbs 25... And verse 28. Actually, I want Ecclesiastes first. Ben, get me Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9. That's what I want first. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit uh -huh. to be angry, uh -huh. for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. So it said, if you are quick, or if you are short-tempered, quick to be angry, that's that's foolish. So if an individual can get under your skin to cause you to react a certain way, usually out of anger, because that's usually what we see with our brothers in Israel, that shit is foolish. That makes you a fool. That doesn't make you a man. You did not prove a point. You did not make the most high look good in that instance. You look stupid. That's oh, that's what it is. That looks foolish. I've I've seen, but even brothers in my own congregation that have had, that have had moments like this, and we pull them to the side. Like, you a man? Why you acting like a female? Well, what you mean is you're being emotional. This is where people get the game twisted. People feel emotional is just when you're crying. People feel it's emotional when you just get offended easily, and now you don't want to deal with brothers, and you shut down, and you keep your mouth. No. Anger is an emotion, too. And brothers that are quick to get angry are emotional because you allow someone else to get under your skin 
and cause you to act out of character. Give me Proverbs 25 and 28. Grab that for me, Miles. Proverbs 25 and 28. Ah, Proverbs 25 and 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. What, what is that saying? An individual that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that has no walls. What is that saying? I'll make it simple for you. The walls around the city are supposed to protect it. If you don't have any walls around your city, you don't have any barriers, you don't have any protection, it's easy for people to invade into it. It's easy for people to conquer it. It's easier for people, easy for people to overrun it. If you can't control your spirit, guess what? Somebody else will. I know what triggers this man. I'm going to pick at this because I know this is going to piss him off. Uh, today, today, I'm just, uh, I'm not even trying to be edifying. I'm coming up here to be contentious on purpose because I know I can get under this nigga's skin because I do it all the time. That's feminine. A man who cannot control his emotions is like a city without walls. A man that cannot control his emotions is a feminine man. Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, Ben. First, this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor what? Nor effeminate. One more time. Nor effeminate. Uh-huh. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Right. So, one of those things is a feminine man will not make it into the kingdom. Now, again, just because you shut just just because you don't shut down when an argument ensues, just because you don't cry all the that don't mean you're not feminine. If someone can get under your skin to make you angry all the time and you cannot control your emotions. You are feminine. What is feminine? Let's see. Protect, so I'm going to grab the definition, then I want to get the Greek word for it in that particular context. It says belonging to the female sex. Female, effeminate, womanish, having qualities traditionally ascribed to women as sensitivity or gentleness pertaining to a woman or a girl. So I want to read this one again. Having qualities traditionally ascribed to women as sensitivity. When you are sensitive, it is easy for someone to affect your emotions. That's what that means, right? So if you're an individual who maybe you don't cry all the time, but an individual knows that they can make you mad with, with trigger words. And, or if you're known for an individual who's as an individual who's always getting mad because of, I don't know, trigger words or certain individuals come into the room and disrupt your spirit and and get you knocked all you know out of whack that's feminine that's feminine and that's what a lot of our brothers do not understand if you get mad all the damn time because you don't get your way if you get mad all the time when someone disagrees with you if if somebody can call you an idiot or say you're you're a fag and then you turn around tip for tat no you're a fag that's feminine. They're, they can control your emotions. That makes you easily controlled. That makes you feminine. Right? Let's go to the Greek word. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 6. I use two different concordances. Right now I'm using one of my concordances. It's called accordance. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Here it is, a feminine. Soft to the touch, delicate. So an individual, of course, we know it's not literally soft to the touch, but an individual who is delicate, an individual who is sensitive, an individual who gets in their feelings, an individual that someone can control how you feel. You are what's called a feminine. That's not masculine, right? So when we're dealing with people, you should not 
be allowing individuals to to rule other people to rule your spirit. You cannot do that because that is feminine. No matter who you're dealing with, Colossians 4 said, walk in wisdom toward those that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech always be, uh, excuse me, be with grace, seasoned with salt. No matter who you're dealing with, you need to be speaking in wisdom. Someone call you a fit. Matter of fact, all oh, praises. This brother just came in. Corey just came in. A sister called Corey a bitch on stage just the other day. You know what Corey did? He didn't respond. Because Corey knows that he's a man. Corey knows that he's not a bitch. So he didn't have to respond. He didn't have to play tit for tat. He didn't have to be petty. Because Corey was in that moment exemplifying the trait of masculinity, self-control. If you can't do that, that's you're not you're not masculine. Doesn't matter how you feel about what I'm saying, you're not masculine. Scriptures tell you when you're dealing with certain individuals, when you're dealing with this is for the teachers, these are the leaders, this is the face of Israel. Walk in wisdom toward those that are without. Have your speech seasoned with salt. Um Miles, give me Titus chapter two. And right behind us, um, Ben, can you get me Sirach? Dom, I'm not sure if you're available. Are you Are you available to read or anything? Dom, are you just, uh, you might be too tied up. I know Corey said he'd be tied up. No, I can help out. Con, 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 okay. Um, Miles, give me Titus 2 and 7 through oh. 8. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of I'm good I'm sorry, work. Start, at, start at verse 6. Start at verse 6, I'm sorry. Con, verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Young men need to be exhorted, need to be encouraged to be sober-minded. That's not talking about not being drunk all the time. It's talking about being clear-headed. That's talking about being in the right state of mind, being humble, being calm. You can look up the Greek word for it. It's sopronio, sopronio excuse me. And it literally says to be of a sound mind, to be in one's right mind, to be sane, to be calm. To be humble minded, right? To be so exhort them to be sober minded, which is referencing being humble, being in the right state of mind, being calm, having control of yourself, read. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. Making sure that you are showing yourself a pattern of good works. People know that this brother is a solid brother. This brother is always showing the fruits of the spirit. Read. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. In your gravity. teachings, Salakia, in your teachings, showing no corruptness, no crazy doctrines. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we ain't got to keep the law no more. Oh, yeah, you know, we could, uh, uh, sex, sex isn't marriage. Like, any of these crazy doctrines, one of the ones that I heard recently as far as being able, being able to lay with harlots, all of that stuff, corrupt, right? Scriptures say having uncorrupt doctrine, read. Gravity. Gravity. Now, watch this. And the reason why I'm stopping him is so we ain't, we're not overlooking none of these words. Gravity, majesty, dignity or dignified seriousness. So, so so far, what we've gotten is young men, be calm, have self-control, be humble-minded, show a pattern of good works, have a good name. Your teachings and your doctrines need to be uncorrupt. Make sure that you're showing gravity, which is majesty or grace or dignity. Read. Sincerity. Sincerity, purity, soundness. Since uh, uh, um, what is that word? Genuine, Gen- genuineness. Read. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, and sound speech that cannot be condemned. But why? Read. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So the scriptures tell the young men, this is the way that you need to conduct yourself because the enemy is always looking for a reason. 
brothers up here have been a witness to a number of situations where brothers to be what's what, what we consider in a vice grip, right? We talk in doctrine, we talk in doctrine, we talk in doctrine. We got you stuck. There's nothing you can do about this. And somebody, and this hasn't happened every time, but there's been situations where someone would say something sly and then the individual will respond, or excuse me, one of the teachers will respond and say something sly back. And then, as I think y'all will all like to call it, you gave them a parachute. Now you're no longer blameless. Now they can find a way to skate out of there. Now they can change the topic because you weren't sounding your speech. You weren't uncorrupt. You weren't moving in gravity or dignity, right? You allowed something they said to get under your skin to make you respond. Brothers on the street do it. Brothers on Clubhouse have done it. I've watched just regular men do it. Some of our men have done it. And we've had to holler at them like at the end of the day, that's not what the hell we teach. You a man, you need to learn to control yourself and control your spirit. So as a masculine man, as a teacher, the way that you deal with people has to be this way. Ben, can you give me, um, what did I ask you for? Sirach 23, 11 and verse 15. Huh. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23 and verse 11. A man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity, and the plague shall never depart from his house. Con, drop down to verse 15. We're going to get this in context, right? Con, the man that is accustomed to appropriate appropriate words will never be reformed all the days of his life Con. so we see in the scriptures how the lord looks at individual who is accustomed to using what are called reproachable offensive non-dignified words this is what appropriate words are offensive shameful reproachful words so an individual who, if you guys are arguing, F you nigga, you you niggas is gay. Uh, like when when you start doing things, and and it's now mind you, it says a person who is accustomed to these things, an individual who use these words all the time, a person who has a what is the word reputation for being that person that you know is going to do that. That's a problem. It says a person like that can't be reformed. Does it literally mean it can't be reformed? No, but they're saying more likely than not, they're not going to be, be, be able to be reformed. The scriptures look down on a person like that. As a man, you should not be moving like that. Neither should you be teaching men to move like that. I've had a number of conversations with brothers in this truth. I've had a number of conversations with men in this truth. Some are teachers, some are not. Some are sheep, some are shepherds. And what I realized is a lot of times there is this um, reputation about how Israelite men treat our sisters and treat other people, right? And a lot of the sheep move this way in their house and move this way in their dealings with their family and move this way in their dealings with other people because a lot of the more notable teachers move this way. Again, that's not masculinity. Just because you can rah, rah, and yell, and that's not masculine. What masculinity is, is wisdom. Walking in wisdom. Being sound in your... Matter of fact, Titus 2 is the perfect exemplification of of masculinity because it says you're teaching the men to do this so you know it's a masculine trait when we talk about what femininity is i don't heard brothers be called feminine all the time so we know that femininity is referencing pertaining to a woman and one of the traits that men say all the time you act in feminine because you can't control your spirit well you know what brothers if you allow somebody to get under your skin and you want to play tit for tat they call you gay you call them gay back they call you stupid you call them a you call them 
uh, um, they call you a moron, you call them a moron. That is feminine. That would make you feminine. Right? So, we're dealing with this spirit that permeates through Israel. Because the truth of the matter is, it's it's a lot of people that do this in Israel. Now, is it a sin to cuss? No, we know it's not a sin to cuss. But if you know that these things are offensive to people, then why would you proceed to continue to do it? The scriptures say a person who is accustomed to opprobrious words. If you're accustomed to saying things that offend people and you're like, well, shit, it's not a sin. Show me. You can't be reformed. It looks It's looked down upon. Right, go to um, Miles. Can you get me Titus chapter two? Dom, can you please get me First Timothy three and one? We gonna read one through three, but uh, Miles, I want Second Timothy. I want to read two, twenty four through twenty six. You want Titus or Timothy? I want Second Timothy first. Huh. Twenty four through twenty six. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So it says the servant, Salakia, the servant of the Lord must not strive, right? Here's the thing, a servant of the Lord. Who is the servant of the Lord? Who is the one that's doing the Lord's will? Waking up the lost sheep, uh, bringing people into repentance. We know this is talking about the men. Read must not strive but be gentle unto all men read that again Ask, read that read that must again must not strive but be gentle unto all men but be what be gentle unto all men scriptures tell you you must be gentle unto all men now there are situations like Christ for example when you just completely disrespect and defile the temple different ball game right but to people who have questions to people who may even come up contentious and have disagreements, you must be gentle to all men. You know how many times people tried to catch Christ up in his words? Christ ain't never cuss nobody out. Christ ain't never called nobody a dumbass. You've never seen Christ utilize opprobrious words is what I'll say. Never. As many times they tried to catch him up. Paul, same thing. Stephen, same thing. Did he say he was wicked? Yeah, because you're wicked. But he never expressed, he never was calling people, just blatantly calling them out their names. He never played tit for tat with them. It was, oh, you want to know this? Okay. I got a question for you. If you answer this question, I, I, I'll answer your question. They couldn't answer the question. But he always left himself what was called blameless, showing a pattern of good works. So those that were contrary to him had nothing to say. He had no guile, no deception. They had nothing to say when Christ finished whatever statement he was making. In so much that they had to lie on this man because they couldn't find any blame in him. Because he moved in gentleness to all men. He moved in meekness. He moved in humility. He was an example, right? So like you read that from the top. We're going to read it through. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. 25. In meekness, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Mm. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Uh-huh. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Yo, like, wait. I want you to pay attention to what was just said. It said the servant of the Lord needs to be gentle, needs to be apt to teach. That means they need to have a temperament to teach too. That don't mean you just, you need to have knowledge of the scriptures. No, have control of your spirit too. That's how you're apt to teach because people have questions. Some of us are sincere, some of them are sincere. Some of them are with guile. Some of them are to be contentious. But to be apt to teach, you need the patience. To be apt to teach, you need 
the, 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 to be able to long suffer. You need to have perspective. You need to be able to see where people are coming from, where they're getting these questions. Because they, you may say, well, that's a stupid question. They may not feel that way because cognitively they're not on your level. Apt to teach is not just I know the precepts. You need to be patient. You need to instruct the people in meekness to those that oppose themselves. What is that saying? Those that are being destructive to their own spirit. If God, per adventure, will give them repentance. So we're hoping that God gives them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth in verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Here's the problem. A lot of people will offend brothers and they'll walk away from this because they were called stupid, because they said it was not for them, because they were idiots and didn't get it. That's blood on your hands. You're supposed to be moving in meekness, instructing the people. Apt to teach, you need to be patient. Apt to teach, you need to have perspective. This is how we're supposed to be dealing with our people as men. There's a lot of toxic masculinity because a lot of brothers don't do that. It says in verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. If you do that shit right, then you will help to recover them into repentance out of the snares of the devil. But if you want to fight with them, if you want to meet their fire with fire, if you want to meet their ignorance with ignorance, you're going to push them away. And when you push them away, that's blood on your hands. It wasn't meant for them. No, nigga, you probably messed up. Stop trying to stop trying to use that as a cop out. It wasn't for them. No, you were probably an asshole. You were probably disrespectful. Because we know a lot of our men today are feminine and they're easily offended. I'm not saying you have to coddle them. But you do have to be aware and have perspective of this. You call me a that's fine. I'm gonna continue on to teach this word. And I'm going to continue to edify you. So long as you ain't put your hands on me, we don't have a problem. I done seen brothers get offended. On, yeah, I call them brothers because even though they were lost, they're still our brothers. I done seen brothers get offended on the stage. And instead of brothers changing their approach to them, they tell these they tell them, you, you just being feminine. He probably is, but he don't get it. Why are you not walking in wisdom toward them that are without you? Why are you not having your, your, your speech seasoned with grace? Why are you not striving to be gentle, patient, meek? Why are you not doing that? Those that's that's masculinity. Give me um give me Sirach 10. Ecclesiastes 10, 1 through 2. I want to read Sirach 10, 1 through 2. Uh, wh whoever, whoever got it. I'm sorry, Dom. I'm sorry, Dom. Do you have Titus? I'm sorry. I, I totally forgot about that. I thought you told me to get First Timothy three. Oh, so like, uh, First Timothy three. Hold on. No, Ty oh, I'm sorry. You're right. First Timothy three. Salakia. Yeah. First Timothy three. Verse one. Yes, one through three. All right. First Timothy chapter three, verse one. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. So like, yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to get the 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 word for that real quick. Let me go to First Timothy myself. First Timothy three and verse one. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Fin finish that verse. You just read that from the top and finish verse one. God, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Right. So, what is a bishop? When you look up the Greek word, it's an overseer, a watcher, a guardian, or an, an ecclesiastical overseer, right? So a bishop is not a church thing. It's not, oh, the niggas is crit. No, a bishop literally just means an overseer. He's watching over the flock. Some people call them leaders. Some people refer to them as, eld you know, their elders. These are the people that are over the congregation, that are watching over the body. An individual who desires to be someone who guards and watches over the people, you desire a good work. Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. Mm. The, the husband of one wife, mm -hmm. vigilant, 
sober, uh-huh. of good behavior, uh-huh. given to hospitality, uh-huh. apt to teach. Right. Hold that right there. A bishop then must be blameless. You can't have no smut on your reputation. You can't be someone that people always have a gripe against. I don't like the way that they're teaching other. I don't like the way that they deal with the people. Because you know why? Scriptures tell you to get the love of the congregation and bow thy heads to great men. You have to gain the love of the congregation. And the way that you do that is to put yourself in a blameless position. You have to make sure that you're apt to teach. You have to make sure that you, uh, uh, where are we at? Uh, are vigilant, sober, salaki. And I want to deal with this one because I know a lot of people don't think that I'm overlooking it. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. When you look into that Hebrew word, there are two different, excuse me, Greek words. There's two different Greek words for the word wife in the New Testament. When you read this in its context, it's referencing being married to one particular type of doctrine. It's not talking about actually you have to be a bishop. If you're a bishop, you can only have one wife like a woman that's not what it's talking about but we're not going to get into that um but it says a bishop they must be blameless they must be the husband of one wife they must be vigilant meaning they need to be paying attention and know what's going on in their congregation scriptures say be diligent to know the state of thy flock as a bishop you need to know that sober meaning you need to be calm you need to have self-control you need to be clear-headed you need to be Modest, that's that's one of the definitions here. You need to be sane, of a sound mind, temperate, discreet, having discretion, of good behavior. Now, mind you, you, if you notice, they keep reiterating something that's very similar. You need to be blameless. You need to be sober-minded. Blameless mean, meaning not doing things where people can start condemning you. Sober mind, making sure that you have a sound mind, making sure that you are clear-headed, making sure that you have discretion, self-control. Making sure that you have good behavior. A part of good behavior is having self-control. Notice they keep bringing this up. Given to hospitality, being hospitable. That's good behavior. If you're hospitable to people, you have to be approachable. People have to be like, I'm comfortable coming to this person. If you're an overseer, people have to be comfortable with you. Apt to teach. Again. Being able to deal with those that want to debate, being able to deal with those that got 100 questions, being able to deal with those who aren't as sharp as you. As a man, as a bishop, as someone who wants to watch over a flock, watch over the people, you have to have these things. As as technically speaking, you're the overseer. If you're a husband, you're the overseer of your house. You still have to hold these 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 standards. You got to hold this. So when you're dealing with people, and then we'll get into that too. Don't worry about it. We're going to get into that too. So when we talk about how you deal with the people, when you're dealing with the people, you got to be blameless. You got to be sober. You got to have good behavior. You got to be apt to teach. You have to be apt to teach. That means you, that don't just mean you got knowledge of the scriptures. That means you have perspective. That means you have compassion. That means you have, a uh, 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 patience that's apt to teach. Dom, can we read verse three? Not given to wine, mm-hmm. no striker, mm-hmm. not greedy of filthy lucre, mm-hmm. but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Right. Not given to wine. If you're a leader, you should not be getting drunk, especially blackout drunk. If you're a leader, you shouldn't be someone that's always trying to come up on a come up. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not being greed, not being someone who's I'm always trying to get a dollar. It's all about the money. No, you're an overseer. It's about the people. If you conning your congregation to give you money, you're greedy of filthy lucre. You're not, you're not apt to be a bishop. You should be patient. You should be not a brawler, not a striker. Not someone who's violent, not someone who's contentious, not someone who's always trying to be, what would this, one of the words was quarrelsome. Argumentative is one of those things. Not a brawler, not covetous. Not someone who's always trying to desire something that someone else has. As a leader, you should not be doing these things. As a man, 
you should not be doing these things because that goes back into Titus 2 talking about being blameless. When you're blameless, you don't have any of these. But as for Sirach 10, give me give me Ecclesiastes 10, please. Uh, I asked Miles. I got it. God. And uh, let me see. Is Ben still here? Yeah, I'm here. God, can you get me uh, James 3 and 1? Read that, Sirach, Miles. Sirach chapter 10, verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people. Uh -huh. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Uh-huh. As the judge of the people is now, now himself. this is Salakia. Let, let, I, I want to, we going we going this part, we want to deal with slowly. And we're going to talk about this one. Read that again. Verse two. As Verse two. The judge, as the judge of the people is himself. Mm -hmm. So are his officers. Mm -hmm. and, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, mm -hmm. such are all they that dwell therein. Right. This Let's put this in perspective. That's what I love about the scriptures. They're practical. It says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So the judge is the top guy. The officers are those that are beneath him. It says, just like as the judges are, so will his officers be. What manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You know what that's saying? It's saying that whoever you're under, whoever you're learning from, whoever's teaching you how whatever type of spirit they have, that's the spirit that your body is going to move in because they're the head. They're the leaders. So if your leader is contentious and he's always arguing or he's always about to get in a brawl or if he's always wanting to debate, look at all of the men under them. They all going to have a very similar spirit. If your leader has a problem with women, look at all of them they're going to have a very similar spirit. This is why it's important for you to know even who you up under. Because brothers look good on the, on YouTube. Brothers look good at street. Oh, it's a powerful street teach. That's a, I'll tell you like this, though. You go sit in some of these in the classroom classes, you start to hear some funny, some funny doctrines. You sit on Clubhouse long enough, start to hear some some funny doctrines and then you'd be like yo this is one of the this is one of the leaders or at least one of the if not top leader he's one of the ones that everybody's listening to just the those that are the leaders will affect the people now, why is this important because i see a lot of brothers dealing with their that have i've had a number of conversations with brothers that have been dealing with their wives. I've dealt with men who will say, man, I just don't know how to do it. My wife, she's not listening to blah, blah, blah. And I will ask them, well, what are you doing? Or I'll finally sit down and be able to talk to the both of them and see how they interact with each other. And I'm like, this is the problem. But it's not their fault. It's the people they listen to. The people that they're listening to are just saying, y'all sisters, the men is the head. Y'all need to shut the hell up. And they're doing that in their house. That's not how you move. That shit is not practical. Yes, do sisters need to shut up? Yeah, they do. But as a man, that's not what you, that's not how you, that's not how you teach it. Me and my wife have had a couple of disagreements. And she'll tell you, I don't think she's in here right now, but she'll tell you. She had an attitude. She wasn't trying to listen. And I'm just like, okay. Well, sweetheart, here's the thing. Right now, where you are, I want you to remember, we agree that there's a level of, there, there's a place that we wouldn't go with one another. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to call you out your name. I said, but I want you to remember that the most high is watching everything you're doing right now. Leave it at that. You know what that woman did the next day? She apologized. She didn't talk to me the whole day. I thought she had an attitude still. She said, I just feel so dumb. She said, because you were right. And I know the most high is just looking at me like, you stupid. You, you, you are stupid right now. I didn't say, yeah, he is looking at you like you're stupid. He said, I told her, 
well, sweetheart, now we got to do better. I said, because I've, I said, have I ever tried to lead you wrong? No. Have I ever told you you didn't have a voice? No. Do I not always try to get your input on things? Yes. I said, then there's a level of respect that I should be gaining. The way that you're acting, that it's not, that's not how you should be behaving. And she was like, damn, and she was cut to the soul. If y'all arguing back and forth, if she yells and you yell, nobody's listening. But again, it's a rock 10. When brothers are teaching these things, when brothers got that spirit on them, there's a lot of people on Clubhouse that be listening to this shit. There's a lot of people on Clubhouse that be in these rooms. And you forget these people got wives. You forget these people, they got, they got families. And this is how they interact with them because they see you interact with people like that. That's wrong. And that's why, let's go to James. Let's go to James 3. Okay. This is the book of James, chapter 3 and verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, mm. knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. When you look up that word masters, it says rabbi, meaning teacher. It ain't meant for everybody to be a teacher because you're going to receive a greater condemnation. Why? Because you're the one leading the people. And if you lead them astray, oh boy. If you're leading them astray, understand the most high, he got something special for you. That's why it's so, 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 so important for you to understand. You don't have to be a teacher. Everybody's not meant to be a teacher. Everyone's not meant to lead people. If you're really about the people, this isn't a glorious thing. The counseling, the hearing other people's problems, this isn't, this is, listen to me when I say it's not a glorious thing. It's a good work, but it's not a glorious thing because you've got to bear the burden of other people's problems. You got to deal with debating all the time because there may be a soul right there watching. And if you get cut, they're going to walk away. Be ye not many masters because you're going to receive a greater condemnation. That also boils over into as the leader of the people, so are those that are beneath them. Be ye not many masters, be ye not many leaders or teachers, because you're going to receive a greater condemnation when you're teaching people or counseling people the wrong way. So guess what? If you're just saying, women, y'all just need to shut the up and listen. And they're saying that in their house. And they're getting into it with their wives. And let's say their wife leaves the truth. Guess who's going to receive a greater condemnation? Because you didn't teach. My, let's go to First Peter. This act. This is perfect because this is a perfect segue into my next segment, dealing with our sisters as a masculine man. Give me First Peter three and seven. Whichever brother got it. I got it. Uh, this is the book of First Peter, chapter three, and verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge, read. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Did it say deal with them according to emotion? Read that from the top. Con. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. According to knowledge, read. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel uh -huh. as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Oof. Said that your prayers be not hindered. So if you're not dealing with her according to knowledge and instead you sitting there talking about some, I'm the husband, you the wife, I'm your head. I tell you, shut up, you shut up. Is that according to knowledge? No. That's according to foolishness. That's according to your emotions. Because you got frustrated. You said, shut up. You were the one not controlling your spirit in that moment. She had control of your spirit. That's feminine. When we're dealing with our wives, that's not what you do. But you have brothers that teach that. Now, is it true? It absolutely is true. That 
wives. If your husband is telling you to do something, you should not be arguing back with him as long as he didn't tell you to sin. It is absolutely true that if your husband expresses that he wants something done, you should do it. If he says no to something, that is it. We shouldn't be fighting about it. That's absolutely true. But the delivery is wrong. I'm the husband. Shut up. I said, shut up. You shut up. It's not dealing with them according to knowledge. It's not giving honor to them as unto the weaker vessel. When they say that they're the weaker vessel, part of it is emotionally, spiritually. They know that they're the weaker vessel. We know that. So we have to deal with them according to knowledge. What is knowledge? What is knowledge? That means according to the information that you know in your mind, because that's what knowledge is, is information. According to the information that you know in your mind, this is how you're supposed to deal with them. I know she's emotional, so what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to sit up here and cuss her out because she's probably going to shut down or it's going to turn into a fight. I know that if I talk to my wife this way, she will receive it better. That's what knowledge is. That's how you're supposed to deal with your women. So we've, so we've covered how you deal with other people. We've covered how you deal with those that have questions or just individuals in, in as a whole. And what we've covered so far was you have to have sound speech. You have to be blameless in the way that you move. You have to have ultimately good character and you cannot be offensive in offending people. And you cannot be easily offended yourself and move in a feminine spirit of not having self-control, not being able to control your own temper. Those are the things we've covered thus far. That's not masculine. When you can't control your own temper, when you got to do tit for tat, when you are disrespecting people because they disrespected you, that's all feminine. That's not masculine. Now we're rolling into how to do as a masculine man, even amongst your women. Now, of course, there's no cookie cutter method. Everything is, uh, what is it called? Circumstantial. But one thing I do know, that's not circumstantial is you always supposed to deal with your wives according to knowledge. And you're supposed to understand that she is the weaker vessel. Understanding she's the weaker vessel means you're going to move in wisdom and how you deal with her. You know, if she gets loud and you'll get loud, nobody's going to hear anyone. If she calls you out your name, you call her out, out of her name. Nobody's going to hear anything. But if you stand your ground as a masculine man after she done got it all out. And you stand your ground as what people call an alpha male. And say, all right, you done? All right, now let's talk about it. A lot of times they'll be receptive because they done got it out their system. And then they're going to look stupid. At the end of the day, they're going to feel dumb because they're going to be like, damn, I did all of that. And look at how he dealt with me. I've seen a number of um, brothers and sisters. We have this thing called a marriage circle. We do every new moon. All the couples come in. We do like little activities together because it helps build the bond in the marriage. This month, uh, there was, it was, uh, um, there was a segment of it. It was called, I love it when you, and every, just about every sister said this about their husband. I love it when you're patient with me. And I appreciate the fact that you're so patient with me because sometimes I don't deserve it. They have said this because brothers have been moving in a masculine spirit, but you can't do that when you sit in there cussing back and forth to each other. It doesn't work that way. At the end of the day, after you stood your ground and stayed blameless, they don't think about it. And then I'm like, damn, I made myself look like a fool. Damn, the most high probably looking down on me, down on me right now. I look like an idiot. This happens, but not if y'all both going back and forth and arguing. Because you'd allow her to get under your skin and look at how you're dealing with her. Not as a masculine man. Let's go to... um. Let's go to Sirach 430. Whoever got it, you can uh, you can read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 30. Con. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, uh -huh. nor frantic among thy servants. Right, so they just gave you two extremes. Don't be a lion, but don't be frantic. A lion is someone that is firm in their stance, they're bold, they're brave, but they like to rah rah all the time. They have to establish their dominance. You don't have to do that amongst your house, but you also can't be frantic. You can't be not knowing what's going on. You can't be, oh my God, I'm so unorganized. I'm so, I'm freaking out. You can't be that either. There has to be a, a, a balance. 
that tells you don't be a lion in your house. You shouldn't be a lion in your household to your children, to your to your wife. You don't have to rah rah on your wife. You ain't got to be yelling at your wife and cussing her out, even though you feel she may deserve it. That's not masculine. Any man, any man's man knows I'm not finna yell. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into a shouting match with my wife. I'm not playing tit for tat with my wife. You know why? Because she's doing that because she's emotional, because she's feminine. And if I do that, I'm showing those same qualities. I'm not doing that. As a masculine man, you're not doing that. Being a lion in your house, if she's getting out of pocket or she didn't do what you asked her to do when you wanted her to do it, getting all rah-rah yelling in her face, you wicked as hell. Rah, rah, rah. Don't do that. That's not masculine. That's feminine. Give me a... Um, Give me where we want to go with this. Give me first Timothy five. Teach you what a masculine husband looks like. First Timothy five. We're going to read verse eight. Whoever got it. All right. This is the book of first Timothy chapter five and verse eight. But if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Any man that does not provide for this is masculinity. If you provide for your house, if you don't provide, not only is you a you're feminine, I'll watch my wording, a B A N, not only are you feminine, but you're worse than an infidel. Watch this, though, because a lot of people, I've got a job, I'll pay for this. No, 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 no. Watch this. A man is a provider. What does he provide? Yes, he will provide financially. Is that it? No. He's going to provide spiritually. He's going to provide you spiritual guidance and understanding. He's going to teach you in righteousness. He's going to provide emotionally. Men, it's not, you're not a fag for, for saying, baby, I love you. You're not soft for your wife want to be cuddled all up under you and you're like, I ain't trying to have all of that. You're not soft for if your wife want to hold your hand in public. Like, that's not, that's not providing affection, providing emotionally, providing spiritually, providing physically. Can you provide that protection? Can you provide due benevolence? These are things that a man have to provide for his own household, his wife being a part of that household. It's not wrong for you to show love and affection and kiki and giggle with your wife. It's not. Matter of fact, Abraham did it. In so much that he said, oh, no, this is my sister. And the Egyptians saw them playing out in the field. He said, hell no, this, this nigga lying to me. This ain't his damn sister. Look at how they dealing with each other. He showed affection to his wife. Brothers, love is not only keeping I keep the commandments. I do love her. That's not how that works. Jonathan and David had love for one another. It wasn't, I was keeping the command. No, he had, he had feelings toward Jonathan. This is my, bro, I love this dude. Like when he died, I cried. We are best friends. I have an affinity to this man. Love ain't just, oh, I'll keep the commandments. I do love you. Most high dealing with emotion. He kind of is. Because David was very emotional. I won't say he was very emotional. Let me check that. David had a big heart. And David was emotional, but he was not overly emotional. His best friend died, he cried. His son died, he cried, even though his son was trying to kill him. The man had a big heart full of love. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Showing a little affection to your wife, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's go on a date. You probably don't feel like it, but there's nothing wrong with that. Do benevolence ain't just sex. Do benevolence is love that is owed to them. Be benevolent to them. Be good to them. Give them affection. They may want to go on a date. If it's owed to them, it's owed to them. That's what do benevolence is. Because remember, many people in the world have cheated because they said, you didn't show me enough attention. 
That's a part of benevolence. Give them affection and attention. That's masculine. That's not gay. You're not soft if you do that. There's nothing wrong with that. How should we be dealing with our wives? We should be dealing with them according to knowledge. We should be moving in wisdom. We should be patient with them. We should show them affection and do benevolence. There's nothing wrong with that. We should not be telling them to shut the up. Shut your mouth because I'm your husband. You should not be doing that to anybody. That's foul. That's wrong. That's wicked. That's foolish. You a wicked ass woman. Well, damn, I could have swore Sirach said a wicked woman is a portion given unto a wicked man. So go ahead and call her wicked if you want to. Go ahead and call her wicked if you want to, bruh. Sirach 10, as the leader, so are those that are beneath them. You're the leader of that household. If she out of order, your ass must be out of order. Check yourself. Give me, um, I don't even have to go to these. I'm, I'm going to quote these. Ecclesiastes 9 and Proverbs 5. They both talk, Ecclesiastes 9 says, live joyfully with the wife of thy youth. Proverbs 5 and 18 through 19 says, rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Um, I don't, actually, I do want to go to Proverbs 5. Go to Proverbs 5. I think it's 18 through 19. But Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 says, live joyfully with the wife of thy youth. Uh, or the wife of thy vanity or so, something along those lines. Because remember, in Ecclesiastes, he's always talking about everything really means nothing. But a portion of your life is you have a wife. Live joyfully with her. How do you live joyfully with her? Showing one another affection. That's how you guys going to live joyfully with one another. Not being disdain. Not I don't want to deal with them. Not I don't want to deal with her. It's not how that works. Give me uh, what did I ask for? Proverbs 5. 18 and I believe 19. I'm going to double check verse 19, but Proverbs God. 5 and 18 for sure. God. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Read 19. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be uh -huh. thou ravished always with her love. Now how do you get that if you're not showing affection to your wife? You can be a masculine man and show affection to your wife. It says, let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. There is nothing wrong with that. You are still a man if you can rejoice with your wife. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Look at how gracefully you watch the roe and the deer just, I don't know, frolic in the field. It said, let her just be graceful unto you. And then be ravished always with her love. But you can't do that if you're not showing her love and affection. Brothers, it's not a sin. Brothers, it's not wrong. You're not gay. You're not soft if you do this. This is masculine. This is, this is free game for brothers. There's a way that we have to conduct ourselves. And we have to. We, when I say we have to, we absolutely must. We have to do better. So... We've dealt with when we're dealing with each when we're dealing with other people and we're teaching the people, there's a way we need to uphold ourselves that counts as masculine. Brothers who are short tempered and can, cannot control their spirits, that's feminine. That's not masculine. Brothers have to do better and stop letting people get under their skin. That's gay. That's feminine. We, there is a way that we should be dealing with our wives. We should not be a lion in the house. We should not be meeting. They screaming with our screaming. They call us dumb. We call them a bit. We don't do that. Don't be a lion in your house. Deal with them according to knowledge. I'm sorry. Give me one more. Ephesians 5 and 25 and then drop down to 28. Whoever can get it, get that for me. Um, make sure as a man, a masculine man, you're providing not just financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically. That's what a masculine man does. They provide. They provide spiritual guidance. They provide that comfort. They provide that affection. And that's how you deal with them according to knowledge as well. Whoever has that Ephesians, read that for me, please. Con, Ephesians 5 and 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave uh -huh. himself for it. Uh-huh. Is that the end of 25? Con. Read 28. 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He Read. that loveth his wife loveth himself. 
Right. So again, the way that you love your own self, the way that you take care of your own self, you should be taking care of your wife the same way. That's the truth. That's the God's honest truth. So as a masculine man, these are the things that you need to be doing in your house. Because we dealing with, a, look, I've had a number of conversations with married individuals and I found out, and I'm going to call a spade a spade. I found out a lot of times the problem is the brother. And I know a lot of y'all going to be like, ooh, this mother, this nigga up here sipping to the wind. No, I'm, I'm calling a spade a spade. Because the, the difference between myself and a lot of people, even if I don't do it on stage, I'll message brothers in the back chat like, yo, that's a little offer. Hey, did you just say whoop, whoop, whoop? And we'll have a conversation about it. There was a situation just the other day. It was a young lady that came in. And she was an Israelite. Who treats women better? Islam, Israelites, Israelite men, or Christians? She said, uh, now granted, she kind of had to retract the statement because she hadn't dealt with a number of these men. But how her experience with these men, how she was treated by these men, of course, she wasn't married to them. She said she had been treated better by these men, even if it wasn't in a, um, what is the word, um, conjugal way. It was they just treated her better. And a lot of y'all dragged her in the back chat. And I saw it. And I said, that is her experience. You cannot say she's wrong for her experience. And if you want me to keep it a buck, there are brothers that, to the best of their ability, keep everything in this book and they treat women right. But a lot of Israelites is niggas with Bibles. And a lot of these niggas don't treat women right. And they don't treat other people right. And some people will just sweep it under the rug. It is what it is. And that Sirach 10, it hits so hard because a lot of these people be leaders. And then you got the trickle down effect because these other men think it's OK because the leader said, this is how you do it. Nope. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong as hell. But that's why we're here today to talk about these toxic traits that people consider masculinity in Israel. And whoever's feelings get hurt, whoever's spirit get pricked, all praise to the Most High. If you're mad at me, you mad at God. Because I'm nothing but a messenger. Scriptures say what they say. What, what, what matter of fact, I want to grab this scripture. I meant to grab this at the beginning because I knew I was going to step on some people's toes. Um, get me um, Galatians 4 and 16, please. Whoever got it, give me Galatians 4 and verse 16. This is the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Are you mad at me because I'm telling you what it is? I, 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 I've watched this happen. I didn't have to get on brothers like, bro, that's not wise. That's stupid, honestly. How you dealing with that person or how you even dealing in your house? Like that's, that's dumb. Uh, this is how I, uh, show me where I sin, bruh. There's this thing called wisdom that you're missing. You want to keep fighting with your wife? Keep doing what you're doing. You want her to start complying with you? Let's shut the fuck up and listen. That's what you need to do. Shut up and listen, bruh. Because you guys think that it's this utopia. Where everything's perfect. There's a lot of sisters that come out of different backgrounds. There's a lot of sisters in here with masculine spirits. That they're learning to become feminine. So sometimes you got kickback because this is their natural response to things. You have to deal with them according to wisdom. And when you deal with them according to wisdom, it'll help to soothe that spirit. And they'll be able to transition over more into femininity. But a lot of guys, you guys don't understand that because you're a woman, you need to stay in your place. This is It's true. I'm not arguing that. But the way that you deliver it, they're not going to do that. Y'all got to be more practical and realistic. Give me, um, 
Give me. <sighs> Let's move into the final, the final realm, right? I want to move into the final realm. So we got how you're supposed to be teaching and dealing with other people. That's the masculine way to do it. You can't be offensive. You got to be blameless, so on and so forth. You you can't be short tempered. You got to be able to control yourself. Otherwise, that's feminine. You got to deal with your sisters and specifically your wives a certain way. You can't be rah rah on them because you're the head because that's feminine too. trying to establish your dominance by saying I am dominant. You're not dominant. That's feminine. And this is the one. Partiality and judgment amongst our brothers. Give me first Timothy five and 20, 20 through 21. Whoever has it, you can read it. First Timothy chapter five, verse 20 through 21. First Timothy chapter five, verse 20. Them that sin rebuke before all that read. others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. You know what that just said? Whoever is doing wrong, you get on their ass. Don't do this impartiality. Meaning I'm a I'm a rebuke the people on the street. I'm a rebuke the brothers that's beneath me. But you know what? That brother's a teacher. He got a lot of charisma. A lot of people know him. Even though I know what he's doing is wrong, I'm going to just, you know, I ain't going to say nothing about it. Damn. And you know what's so crazy? I, I, I have personally, I've fallen victim to that. I've let certain things slide when I shouldn't have let certain things slide. Because the truth of the, and, and that's actually how we got on that that topic, the the one room we had where we was, me and Yawa All and Yawa Sop and uh, one of the brothers from SOT, I think his name was Yai Kwab. Everybody was arguing with me on whether or not, you know, the whole situation about a woman who has an abusive husband. But at the end of the day, I said, y'all wrong. At the end of the day, you are wrong because the law says what it says and there is no asterisk on it, period, right? So. That was around the time when I was like, I can't do that anymore. I cannot allow certain things to be said that is wrong, especially if it's a salvation issue. I can't just sit back on it. So if people is breaking laws, it's not, oh, that's just how their congregation does it. Oh, well, you know, that's just their understanding. Excuse me. Forget that. As a brother, you do nothing by parts. Give me Leviticus 19. 19 and 17, please. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. That is, you, you, you are a hateful brother if you allow certain things to go. I don't care if that's their, that, that's how they understand it. I remember Ariel and the brother from my SGBK had an old argument about whether or not you cook on the Sabbath. Look, that's wrong as hell. There is no, oh, that was, you know, the, the Sabbath was made for men for us to enjoy. It, it was like that back then because they had to get, no, the spirit behind the law is obedience at the end of the day. I don't give a damn why the Lord said don't do it. I'm obeying him because he said it. It's not, oh, that was in that time. No, he said it. And nowhere in the law did it say it change. Doesn't say that. And we, we read the law and then we read the history that shows you majority of the time how to practice the law. How to put the law into practice. You cannot, as a brother, allow certain stuff to go on because that's how they understand it. Loving them, listen to me, loving them is telling them that shit is wrong. I done seen homies, watch this, and I'm going I'm to I'm give you an example of what tough love looks like. I done seen homies that was drunk. And, bro, you're not getting in your car, you drunk, drunk. Nigga, give me my keys, bro, I'm about to go home. Bro, I will knock you the f out right here to keep you from going home. You're not, you're not, give my, boom. Now he's asleep. I'm not letting you go home. Went and laid him down. When you wake up, you should be all right. And then you can go home. 
Sometimes you got to punch your brother spiritually. Punch him in his shit and let him know you foul. He may feel a way about it. He may thank you down the road if he's not being prideful. But you can't allow certain things. You cannot allow certain things because that's how they understand it. Or because, man, that brother's a leader. I don't give a, I don't care. I do not care. Because if you're leading the sheep astray, that's blood on my hands because I heard it. And it's blood on your hands because you're doing it. Read that again, please. That Galatians. Con. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm, I'm your enemy now? I would hope not. I hope you humble yourself. Ben, what was that that I asked you to grab earlier? Uh, it was Leviticus 19, 17. Talakia, the one before that. 1 Timothy 5 and 20. That's probably... Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. Read that, please. Con. Them that sin rebuke before all. If they sin in, Salakia, if they sin in, you need to check them. Right? Read. That others also may fear. So everyone else can see, oh, wow, they serious about it. They not just sweeping shit under the rug. That, that brother did wrong and they checked him on that. Read. I charge thee before God. I charge you, meaning Jesus I Christ. command you before the most high. I command you. I charge you means I command you to do this, read. And the Lord Jesus Christ and uh -huh. the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, mm -hmm. doing nothing by partiality. He said, now don't sit up here and prefer one thing over the other. I'm going to say something about this, but not that. I'm going to do this, but not that. No, do nothing in partiality. Keep that shit on it. If you're going to do that, do that. If you're going to judge this person for doing it, just because this person holds a higher rank, you're not going to judge them. No, 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 no. That's not righteous. Give me Deuteronomy 1. We're going to read 16 and 17. And then I want Isaiah 11. We almost done. Isaiah 11, and I want to read 1 through 3. But give me a Deuteronomy 1 and 16 first. Con. Whoever got it, you can read it. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 16. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between on, every on, man on, and his on, brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Most, Moses, this... <laughs> read, read that from the top. Read that from the top. And I charged your judges at that time, uh -huh. saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, uh -huh. And judge righteous and do what? And judge righteously. One more time. And judge righteously. Uh huh. Read between every man and his brother. Uh huh. And the stranger that is with him. Uh huh. Seventeen. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. You shall not do what? Respect persons in judgment. Read. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Uh huh. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. What? Whoa, 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 this, I love this part. Read that again. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. Man, that's my bro, man. He gonna, man, he gonna be mad at me. He gonna feel a way about me if I say something to him. I mean, it ain't really that big of a deal. No, read that again. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. I don't give a damn how you feel. Why? Read. For the judgment is God's. The judgment is whose? God's. The Most High said this is what righteousness is. If they feel a way about it, they got a problem with you for saying something. They got a problem with me. And they don't want these problems. Not with me. Not with me. So this is what we got to understand. I don't care if you lead your congregation. You are not above reproof. You know how we know this? Because when we read in the book of Susanna, the two wicked elders, the young man coming up named Daniel, put that on front street for their wickedness. And it was put to death. It wasn't, oh, well, you know, those are the elders. The everybody know them. No, they don't sweep stuff under the rug. As a righteous individual, you cannot do that. If people are doing wrong, you need to say something. And again, I've been, I've been, I've been one of those people. 
I've been one of those people. I ain't gonna say nothing. And to this day, depending on the topic, I probably won't say anything. If it's not a salvation thing, okay, whatever. But if it's something that I feel may create a stumbling block for people's salvation, I'm going to say something. The water for that precept, uh, Ben. Acts 5 and 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Give me um, Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. Watch this. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The lock here. So question. This is for Miles, Ben, or Dominic. Who is this talking about? Yeah. Christ. Con, right? Read. Con. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Mm -hmm. The spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding. Mm -hmm. The spirit of counsel and might. Mm -hmm. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Uh huh. And shall make him a quick understanding. So, Axlaki. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Right. And, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Right. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Verse four. But with righteousness. With what? But with righteousness. One more time. But with righteousness. Read. Shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek, for the earth. It's like a, of the earth. Right. So I, we don't need to read the rest because the rest of it is not. It, we don't need it right now, at least. So it's at verse four, a part of this Holy Spirit is going to allow him to judge with righteous judgment and reprove with equity or uprightness or righteousness as a part of the Holy Spirit. You can't be up here talking about you got the Holy Spirit. You got these breakdowns when you can't even you ain't got the balls to judge somebody who's doing wrong because they got a higher status than you. You ain't got the nuts to say something. You ain't got the Holy Spirit. Brother, be talking about, I'm willing to die for this truth. Bruh, you ain't even got the heart to tell such and such that he shouldn't be cooking on the Sabbath. Or, 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 or they shouldn't be going to the gym on the Sabbath. Or, or, bruh, that is your wife. I don't care if you did that on accident. That's what it is, because that's what the law says. It says sex is marriage, not sex is marriage, except if you fuck up. You ain't, if, you ain't willing to die for this truth. A lot of y'all be capping. I said it early on. I'm going to piss some people off today. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. Because this needs to be said. And that's why I, that's why I love this segment, Moral of the Story, because we're going to talk about your morals. We're going to talk about your spirit. We're going to talk about your spirit. So it said, one of the, the, the characteristics that an individual will gain by having the spirit of the Lord or the Holy Spirit was to be able to judge in righteousness and, in, and reprove, meaning to correct in equity, in righteousness and uprightness. That's what that's talking about. Give me this Isaiah 58 and 1. This is so famous. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Bring it out. Cry aloud. Uh-huh. Bear not. Uh-huh. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Read. And show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. How many times have we heard this damn scripture be brought out when we street teach? Why ain't nobody utilizing the same thing when you send other brothers doing foul? Why we ain't crying aloud and spare not to brothers that are in the truth, that are being hypocrites, that are not teaching uprightly, that are sweeping things under the brook. Why, why are we not? Why are we not saying anything to them? Because they're leaders? Because they got big names in Israel? Because they're prominent? Why, why are we not doing it? Why? Cry aloud, spare now. Y'all be so quick to judge people you don't know that don't even know the law, but you won't judge the ones that already do know the law. Or you will, but it'll be the lower people who are just learning. But you won't say nothing to a teacher. Like they're above correction. Ain't nobody above correction. 
I want y'all to understand that Nathan came to David face and said, I want to give you a parable. There was a man that had all the riches in the world. And there was one man that had a little lamb. And that rich man stole that man's only little lamb. What should happen to him? Bring that man here. We gonna kill his ass. Nathan, you're that man. He just said, man, David, gonna, he might get mad. He might kill me. He said, no, nah, the Lord told me to let you know this because you foul, David. You foul, King David. He didn't sweep it under the rug. He came and talked to him because that's the righteous thing to do. I want Sirach 4 and 22. And that'll be my last one. Sirach 4 and 22. Con. Sirach chapter 4, verse 22. Accept no person against thy soul. So don't, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So don't allow people into your circle that is against your soul. That means people that maybe, I don't know, in the world that's trying to get you to do the wrong things or break the law. Don't accept people like that. They're against your soul and your salvation. What else? Read. And let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. Oof. Oof. There's a lot of that going on. Read that again, please. The second half. Read the second half again. One more time. One more and time. And let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. Just because you respect this person don't mean that they all right. They can still be corrected. They can still be off on a doctrine. Acts 5 and 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. Don't allow these big names and these flashy titles and these YouTube views and don't allow that to cause you to fall because you're watching someone because, oh, my God, they're such a powerful speaker. I love the way that they bring it out. But if you see the inside, the, the intricacies of their doctrine, if you see the way that they deal, if you if you see the reasoning when it comes to more what I would call spiritual character building type things, you see there's flaws there. And you still want to take heed because they're such a powerful speaker and they got all this knowledge, but they don't have a lot of wisdom. They bend in the law. Don't, 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 don't allow that to cause you to fall. Because a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, and I've been there. And that's why I, I, I put myself on the front. Every time I do a moral little story, I'm telling you stories about myself. I've been there. Y'all, don't do that. Because if you do, most highs will hold you accountable and you put you're you're condemning your own spirit when you do that so that was my last scripture i'm also going to express um you know a quick recap so when we talk about masculinity oh snap when we talk about masculinity masculinity is there's there's a way that you deal with the people there's a way that you deal with israel those that got questions those that may be scoffers any of that, right? There's a way that you deal with them in a masculine way. Being able to control your spirit and control the way in which you react to the way that they act, there's a masculine way to do that. If you call the names and playing tit for tat, that's not masculine. That's feminine. If they got 101 questions, you just easily getting irritated. That's not. That's not masculine. That's feminine. If, if um, I don't know, they're coming to you in contention and you're trying to meet fire with fire. That's not masculine. That's feminine. That's a problem. So um, brothers need to do better in that realm. In addition to that, um, what was the other one? Oh, dealing with, with dealing with the women, dealing with the sisters, being able to deal with them according to knowledge and move in a masculine way and not meet their pettiness and not meet their fire with fire. That's not when you doing certain things like that. That's not masculine. That's feminine. Being short tempered, not being able to control your emotions and your temper. That's feminine. That's not masculine. And then being an individual who's judging impartiality, being an individual who is um, sweeping things under the rug because someone got a bigger name or because that's the homie or because that's my bro. All of that is unrighteous. It's feminine because you ain't got the balls to say something about it. And it's not masculine. So I'm going to um, give you guys a moment. I guess, well, no, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to... A, I'm going to hold it for about 60 seconds to see if anybody got any questions. If anyone got questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. I'm going to mute my mic for a moment and see 
um, if anyone has anything to say.